Monday, November 1st, time for the morning headlines and a couple of stories about how you move around Minnesota to get us started this morning. First, is it time to pull the plug on the North Star commuter rail lines? Star Tribune reporting that Anoka County doesn't want to pay its part of the operating expenses anymore because virtually no one is riding it. Through August, just 26,000 riders rode North Star this year. Runs from Big Lake to downtown Minneapolis. Ridership since COVID is down 95%. Just four trips a day, no weekend schedule, no rides downtown during special events or Twins games or Vikings games. Original plan was to run this thing out to St. Cloud and ridership since it opened has been disappointing. So we'll see what the legislature decides here. In the biggest new development in St. Paul, there is a requirement that at first maybe makes a lot of sense. All of the new housing going in at the old Ford plant, there is supposed to be a spot for electric vehicle Car sharing, you know, if you're going to put up an apartment building with 50 to 200 units, Fred Mello and the Pioneer Press reporting that the city requires a spot with an electric plug-in for car sharing parking. The problem is there's no real car sharing in the Highland Park area, and our car is the only car sharing operator in St. Paul. They say, well, you know, Highland Bridge, we don't really plan on putting some stations there right now. The developer is like, why do we have to pay and set aside these spots uh, if there's no one that's going to operate it in, in it. So we'll see how this works itself out. On the eve of the election, while we consider who we will elect for school boards or city councils or mayors, perhaps we should consider how we're going to get good people to run for office at all. USA Today's front page, America's public servants say they feel they are under siege. We've reported around here how so many school board members have stepped down during covid because passions and tempers run so hot. Stories of city council members getting threats, sexually harassed, on and on. You know, I mean, no one deserves this sort of treatment, but we're not talking about governors or big city mayors. These are public health workers, election officials. Researchers say what's going on is a combination of technology, of politics, of alienation, and we hope it stops. Very interesting story on the front page of the New York Times today. On the language of race, of sexuality, of gender, the headline on the left, a new scramble over the right words to say. BIPOC or POC for black indigenous people of color or just people of color. Some Asians and Hispanics say, do we fit in that definition or not? And should we say Hispanics? Maybe we should say uh, Latinos or instead of Latinos, you should say Latinx to be more gender inclusive. LGBTQ sometimes now has an I to reflect intersex and an A for asexual and a plus to reflect more things. There is dispute among people in the affected groups being described on the language they prefer. Most agree, you know, some people kind of take advantage of this for political uh, purposes, but language matters. Uh, some question whether the tight focus or perceived policing of language is a good place to be. It is all very fraught. It's very interesting. Uh, and it is, a, you know, as Heather, people in the business of trying to use the terminology that right. people prefer, mm -hmm. uh, but also trying to be clear and understandable to people who maybe aren't studying all of this stuff. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's constantly evolving as well, too. And especially over the past year and a half, we've heard new terms come up. We've heard old terms discarded. Um, but I think you're right. I think it is, you know, there are the words and the language is important, but then there's also sort of what's happening behind that and the action that are there and the political discussions that are happening there too it, it all comes together and that's sort of the bottom line from a lot of the activists who are quoted in this story in the new york times saying we appreciate the focus on the language but it's the actions mm -hmm. uh that ultimately make a difference right I, I suspect this debate will be continuing to long oh, yeah. run and the words sure. will continue to evolve as well all right good stuff.